Thank you for joining me on Think Tech Hawaii. I am Shayna Park, your host for Money Talks. With the higher cost of living, an increasing number of individuals find themselves in debt and have difficulty managing it. My guest is someone who has been on the show before, Brandon Laresco, and he will be sharing tips on how to get out of debt. Hey, Brandon, welcome to the show. Hey, how's it? How are you doing, Shayna? Doing swell. How about you? It's awesome to be back, and it's always great to be on your show, so I'm so excited for today. Thank you. Me too. So, you know, tell me what you've been up to lately. Yeah, so, you know, I've just been out there continue sharing the financial campaign that we're on. You know, I'm actually very happy that we came back from our company trip. We went to um, Thailand, right, together, and there was how many of us again on that trip? Gosh, um, I can't even give it an exact amount, but there was a lot of us. <laughs> It was like 3,000 of us at least. It was really amazing. Our second trip since the pandemic and being um, able to go to another country with family, friends, colleagues. So amazing. And it's just the power of, you know, being able to control our wealth and how to manage it. So I'm just excited to share about um, where we're at. So I actually do have some slides I want to share with you guys, um, you know, where we have been um, on our campaign, helping educate families. So actually in the next slide, you know, I want to talk about more of where we are. Um, I want to talk more about where we're at. So we have actually educated more than 2 million individuals since we started this campaign. And since the pandemic, we actually doubled in size. So it's pretty wow. funny that we grew from now 600 plus financial centers all across North America. And we are, you know, very excited to teach our financial workshops at no charge. So we make sure it's available in different languages, Chinese, Vietnamese, Spanish, and working on other languages so that we can reach out to the masses. Yeah, that's incredible that, you know, um, our campaign and our mission, we're able to reach out to all walks of life and make sure we're educating everyone out there. Yes, yeah, I know, I'm just excited because, you know, we can spend more time on certain topics such as managing debt, you know, because you mentioned a lot of people, especially since the pandemic, they fell into debt and we're having a harder time getting out of it. So, yeah. you know, it's important that we can analyze um, strategies that, you know, we don't make huge changes to our life, but we can still have big money, big amount of savings, save a lot of interest. And, you know, that money can be used for so many different avenues and ways to, to control your financial life. Yeah, and I totally agree with you. And I know you have some statistics for us. So can you tell us where we're at as a society? Yes, we are um, at a point where the average family spends about a quarter of their income on taxes and another 10% on servicing debt. So, you know, more than a third of our money is gone, you know, servicing income and um, using our income to pay off our taxes and debt. And that doesn't even consider the 20% of Americans who use more than half of their income to pay back their debt. So it's crazy to see, you know, how much are we spending to pay the minimum every month or even the interest, the high amount of interest that we're paying over time. Um, but the biggest debt that we do have is student loans. You know, that's pretty huge because the average student may have about $40,000 in debt. Um, I know you do have your own story to share about that as well, Shayna. Yeah. I mean, for me too, I went the traditional route, went to college right after high school and it was fantastic. However, um, you know, after doing two terms, I ended up in $14,000 in student debt. And by not being financially educated, I just brushed it off to the side, let my mail stack up. And finally, when I opened up my mail again, lo and behold, my student loan is around a little over $25,000. And that's a lot for an 18 year old or anyone for that matter to see that all that money you owe. But, you know, fortunately from, you know, the campaign that we're in and learning some of the strategies that you'll be teaching us a little later, um, I was able to pay off my debt in full. So I'm very, very grateful um, with the power of education, right? Yes, right. And, and there's so many different types of debt that we may accumulate. But let's look at an uh, average student scenario. So when we go to college and graduate college, let's say the average we have is about $32,000 in debt. You know, if we just pay off, you know, that $32,000 in the beginning, that doesn't consider the amount of 
interest that we're going to pay as well. And that's about $8,000, which is showing on the screen. So that's another um, quarter or third of your, of your money being spent on top of your original loan amount. So that's nearly $40,000 in, in money you're spending for debt and interest. And it's just crazy to see, you know, how, um, how big our interest can, can go. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, like I said, for me too, right. From 40 or from around 14,000, $12,000 for it going all the way to 25,000, that was a lot of extra money I had to pay. And it was just unfortunate because I just wasn't educated. So there was nothing I could do. I had to pay that money back. And that's why knowing less can definitely cost more. But, um, you know, I know you have two methods that can reduce the amount of time to pay off debt. So can you explain more um, and the, difference, the differences between these two methods? Yeah, the first one I want to show you guys is the debt avalanche. So this is where you're actually paying the highest interest first. So let's say we have um different amount of loans from all the years that you attended college, but we're going to sort it from highest interest first on top all the way to the lowest interest loan. Now, again, we talk about the, the standard plan. If you go with FAFSA or you go with uh, whatever is computed from your student loans, they tell you 10 years. Well, if you did the same thing, the 10-year plan, but add just $100 a month to the highest interest first, then you can actually save yourself some time. You'll see yourself paying off your debt in um, seven years, and you can actually um, save yourself $3,000 in interest. And so instead of paying about $8,000, you're paying about $5,600. So, you know, this is one of the, the best ways to save money on interest with a plan to pay off your debt. So again, you know, you just, you sort it out from that order and you do just a hundred dollars, you know, what is a hundred dollars that can do for our um, debt repayment schedule? And that's just $3 a day, right? I think that's pretty. That's well, like what... a cup of coffee, Starbucks. Um, so yeah, it's a bit, snack. <laughs> Yeah, just a snack, drinking maybe, someone shopping, maybe an outfit uh, a month. And that's how much $100 can save you. It can save you $3,000 in interest for this particular scenario. Uh, but we do have another strategy. And I think we're all familiar with this one. And what is that um, scenario? Uh, this is a debt roll-up plan. Uh, this is actually what had helped me pay off my debt faster. And I love this strategy. And um, please explain more because I know there's a great reason why um, we both love this strategy so much. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, we do teach our free financial workshops. We want to offer at no charge because the power of learning how to manage your debt is so crazy that we can see, you know, if we are to approach this differently, going from the lowest balance first. So if we tackle the, the lowest balance loan and we add $100 into that loan first, you know, we, we actually paid off our dinner. So instead of um, 2025, you actually paid off in 2024. So that's one year from now, less than one year. And then you um, you still save on interest, um, not as much as the highest interest first, but you still paid a total of $5,900 in interest. So it's crazy to see that, hey, another $100, this is how much sooner yourself being out of debt and this is a great strategy for many people because you know i think we're all emotional human beings and if we go on you know how we're feeling imagine if you see um you get um you become debt free much sooner you become debt free instead of um you know three four years seeing your first loan paid off you it takes you just one year imagine it just takes one year to pay off your first loan Crazy, right? It's amazing. You feel so good. You end up going again. We go to the next time. We're so excited to keep going that, you know, we, this is just emotionally invigorating and we're just so happy to continue on. So, you know, that's why we do push out the, the debt roll-up plan. But yeah. if you are someone who wants to save the most amount of interest and you are very patient, then you can go ahead and use the debt avalanche, which is the highest interest first. Yeah, and I think both strategies are fantastic. However, you are right, you know, the psychology behind money and we as human beings are 
emotional creatures. Um, but these two different strategies are making little to no changes in someone's lifestyle. And, you know, they have a, they have a choice between the two. Do they want less interest or, you know, like the psychology behind it, being able to pay down one debt faster and, you know, feeling encouraged to want to keep going. But yeah, these are some awesome tips, Brandon, for someone paying off their student loan. But can you tell me about how um, this can work for an average American who has a mortgage or a car loan and, you know, maybe some credit card uh, debt too? Yes. So, you know, I just shared a little bit about paying off our student loans, but the next slide I want to share is uh, maybe an average American or, you know, what many people could relate to. So what we will have showing is um, different loans and, and lines of credit that we have from our mortgage for our home, right? Bank could be our personal loan, um, your car loan, and all your other credit cards from your favorite stores, maybe like a Home Depot, Macy's, right? And it just says like home improvement or your shopping. So let's say this person, they have $400,000 in debt. Maybe this is not someone in um, Hawaii because that's not our, our mortgage. But let's just say, you know, national average, $400,000 in, in different types of loans and lines of credit. Well, if, if it takes you $2,800 a month to pay off at minimum, what could $100 do? So if you get that scenario, $100 first, um, that first smallest loan, you know, you end up spending less time and money paying it off. So you can see here on the last line on the bottom credit card, $100 added to your plan, instead of 19 months to pay it off, you take two months. So instead of about two years, two months to pay off your debt, and then you, you live within your means and you move that $100 to the next debt, the next smallest one. And we gotta live within our means because you know, we don't want to spend that $110 somewhere. We want to be use it to, to put back into the strategy so that over time, instead of 19 months to pay off one line of credit, it takes um, 19 months to pay off three. So you're, you're already reaching um, your, your plan and your dream much sooner. You, with this plan, the debt roll-up, you can actually become debt-free in 40% less of the time you're able to save much more on interest. And you can only imagine what, what if not just a $3 a day, $100 a month, what about $6 a day or a lunch plate a day, $10 a day? How could that go back to your debt roll up and how much sooner can we be debt free? So I think it's just crazy to see that it just takes little to no change in our finances. That we spend the time and looking at, okay, you know, if I could save money on eating out every day and maybe eating out once or twice a week instead, eating less coffee in the morning. No, I don't bought a coffee this morning. So if we can do something like that, you know, how much could we save on paying back interest and how could that money be used to pay off our um, other areas, our bills, use it to grow our money, grow our wealth. So I think it's it's amazing to see this. And, you know, like you said, Sue, after you wipe off one debt, you want to have that control, right, of not um, wanting to spend elsewhere or look at it as like an extra hundred something dollars more that you can spend a month since you paid off one credit card debt. And, you know, for me, at least, I love boba. So I'm kind of shocked at how expensive it is now. I think it was like $8 last time I went back to Hawaii. But $8, um, if you just round it up, okay, what tip? $10 a day, that's $300 a month that I'd be spending on boba tea. And that could be applied towards debt or, you know, like you said, little to no changes in your lifestyle and really um, getting clear with your wants versus needs. Um, so yeah, I really like those um, strategies that you just shared, but can you tell me more tips that can help people control their debt? Yes, yeah, so some tips that we do have on screen for you guys is, of course, living within your means, but how do we control our debt? You know, if we can control our debt, you know, we can control our money. So, you know, some tips I do have is, um, number one, making sure that you can live it within your means. And if I could um, have you guys watch the next slide, you will have some other tips, which are, you know, using debt, uh, debit or cash. So it's one thing to not get into more debt, and that could be through habits that we have. 
you know, if we can use cash, cash is king. That's what we live by. So try not to use your credit card. I know we love using our, our plastic cards, our friends. If you can perform that plastic surgery, um, stop using it as often and buying what is, um, you know, necessary instead, you know, we, would, we can see how amazing it is, um, how much money we'll save. Um, and, and just in general, we're trying to pay off your debt with a strategy, you know, with a strategy like debt roll up or debt avalanche, you can save yourself 40% of the time, save yourself in interest. Um, but, you know, other than the tips on the screen, you know, I think let's just talk more about, you know, paying what is necessary. I think it's so funny what you brought up, right? Boba is so expensive. Um, <laughs> and it's not just coffee that we spend is the other different habits that we have. Um, eating out a lot, taking a late night snack. Uh, maybe some people, it's the the amount of drinks that they have and the smokes that they that they do throughout the day. You know that can be crazy amount of spending. And I I think it reminds me of a time when, um, when I was teaching a class at a local middle school. Um, do you did you get an allowance when you're in middle school, Shayna? Uh, no, I actually didn't. <laughs> I I actually did start working at a really young age, but. With that came um, learning how to manage my money at a young age too, because if I wasn't getting paid for the next, if I blew all my money the first day I got paid, then I'd have to wait, you know, another two weeks to get paid for whatever I wanted. And it really taught me how to manage my spending and making sure, you know, buying what I wanted, um, but mostly buying what I needed. <laughs> yeah, it's buying what we need. But, you know, I didn't get allowance either when I was um, growing up, but I remember teaching a, a local middle school and, you know, the, it was crazy to see how much kids are spending, even themselves, because Starbucks is so close to their school. I had this one girl, she tracked her expenses for one week, just, you know, eating out maybe once and then all the coffees every day, you know, kids drinking their frappuccinos, that was $50. And I was like, what kind of kids are spending $20, $50 a, a week on, on, you know, food on specialty drinks and desserts and how could that be used to say if we can save maybe a hundred dollars a month for them you know that could that would go so crazy with the compounding interest yeah, but with what you're seeing too is that um how easy it is to spend fifty dollars at starbucks but if we look at that too i know you know, the number can be really scary. $25,000 when I looked at it was very scary. But if we kind of look at paying it off as how much we spend, it could be really fun. And, you know, it does really, at least speaking on my behalf, it really did encourage me to want to keep going at it because, I mean, if I could spend $50 on, say, shoes, why not apply it towards something where I won't have to pay interest for anymore? Interest is money. And I don't think, um, you know, I took that into account at the time when, I was letting my mail sit on the side for a really long time. <laughs> yes, I know. And, and I, I do have one last slide I want to share with everyone. Um, it's about how could we take action. So that would be, you know, taking the time to watch one of our financial workshops that we offer at no charge, you know, because we offer this nationally and locally. So whether it's coming in through an in-person workshop or watching one of our Zoom workshops, offered um, five days a week, three times a day, nearly, you know, we can help you learn about budgeting, you know, growing and increasing your cash flow, not just manage your debt. You can also learn how to protect yourself, you know, your health and wealth, as well as um, protecting your wealth and estate preservation and growing that money and investing. So, you know, there's so many things that we want to teach and share with others and, you know, how these workshops, um, you know, this is not, like just a crash course for dummies. It's like something that we got to take our time and it's just an hour a day. You can finish this in one week. You can finish our whole workshop series. And that's just the start to understanding, building awareness and being able to take time to one, maybe the first time in our lives, sit down as a family and say, hey, you know, uh, what can we do to budget our money better? What can I do to manage my wealth better? Um, and taking the time to analyze because, you know, there are so many times that if I forget to watch what I've been spending, you know, I end up buying more things. I start spending more than my my budget from last month. I end up buying subscriptions and then it starts to add up. And it's just crazy how, you know, life can take a turn in, in how we spend and the direction that we go. And I like how you shared, um, you know, that we can 
we can really take action and um, for ourselves to learn about, you know, different ways to pay off our debt or even to learn more about finances for ourselves, for the future generations to come. And, you know, maybe start that conversation that wasn't talked a lot about um, in our household. But I know right now we're talking about taking action um, for ourselves, but how do you feel about paying someone to, you know, help you get out of debt? Mm, great question. Having paying someone else to help you get out of debt. You know, I actually came across um some of those people. Um, one of my colleagues at the campaign, they said that, hey, you know, before watching these workshops, I actually paid someone to pay off my debt. And it's great for them that they became debt free, but they they told me that they just they just paid the money to them and everything was handled. They didn't earn anything didn't learn any concepts or strategies how to do it themselves so imagine what happens if you end up falling back into debt you know then then what do we do and and the best part is that you know knowing that these strategies are out there for the taking and we're not charging people to to take advantage of them we want to make sure that we can offer it make sure that the resources is there because knowledge is power and if we can help people become their own money managers then we are all at a better financial state. We can all be in a better direction as a as a whole um, state, country, and just helping people alongside one another. And that's why we we deeply care about others, making sure that we can have that knowledge available to them. Yes. So in short, you know, like you said, Sue, um, taking control of our finances, that is so important, especially for our day and age. When we look at inflation and, I mean, the cost of living in Hawaii, I mean, that is just definitely out of our control, but what is in our control is education. And that is something when we learn on our on our own and, you know, seek the education out there, that's something no one can take away from us because like you said, knowledge is power. But, you know, I wanted to move into the direction of, I know that there's good debt and bad debt, you know, so can you please elaborate more on the difference, on the differences between the two? Because like I said, good debt, bad debt. And I think there's um, a fine line. And, you know, sometimes people can get a little confused about the two. Yes. And I think it's just knowing to be American in a way, you got to have that credit score. We, we, also, we almost like fashion it in a way that, you know, we have to get some, some kind of debt to be able to show people that, we're, that we are reliable. So, you know, building your credit score comes from, you know, having that mortgage, um, getting a car loan, but you know, starting with some good debts like a student loan. Student loan is a great debt in a way that you know, if you are on plan and on strategy to pay it off, you know, you can still save yourself, not um, not paying too much into interest, but you're using this money to invest in your education. But you know, if I were to look at a personal aspect, um, I think many people our age are afraid of getting a credit card, or maybe have not even gotten a credit card yet. Oh yes. Yes, definitely. I know a lot of, you know, friends of mine or like you said, people our age that are fearful because of all the, I mean, all the stories, sometimes people project, you know, debt to be a really, really bad thing. But like you said, you need a good credit score. You need debt in order to, you know, purchase a house or, you know, say you want to buy a car too, right? In order to have a lower entry, a lower interest for paying down your car loan, you need good debt. So yeah, el uh, just elaborate a little bit more on that. Yeah, so when you try to develop your your good debt, you know, I um, didn't have a lot of student loans. You know, the best part is preparing how to, you know, go out for future debt, prepare for future debt, and pay off your own debt. But you know, I was young. I had uh, maybe one or st two student loans, and I still need to build up my credit score. So what I did is I went to a local bank, and I asked them, hey, can I get a secured card? And that secure card, you put down a collateral, you put down a certain amount of money to build and set your own credit limit. And that was a way for me to um, start building that score. And it could be a great way for people who want to rebuild their credit. Maybe they went to um, bankruptcy or they already paid off all their debt and they're trying to rebuild their score. You know, getting a secured card um, can be one way for someone to start rebuilding it. So I got my first secure card, then it moved down the line after a year into an unsecured card and I started to get another credit card. And that's when my interest, um, that's when I started to watch the interest, make sure that I was paying um, everything in full. 
and you know then we get that magical raise in our in our credit limit <laughs> our credit score also goes up and of course like you said we gotta make sure we build up our credit score so that we can get the best rates on maybe mortgages car loans and you know it's just a way to show people and companies um how reliable and trustworthy they are with money and i know this is a little off topic but can you share um you know what people should look for in credit cards i know there's different aprs or if there's an annual fee but can you share about that because for some people who haven't applied for a credit card yet what are some you know um basics that they can look for maybe just maybe a brief answer on that yeah so you know based on my personal experience if you are brand new you are having a hard time qualifying for a credit card especially if you're older i had people in their 20s apply for one and they did not get accepted because they just did not have enough credit history. So I would go for a secured card first, which is you put a collateral, your own money down, like a security deposit, and you get it back maybe six, 12 months later. You can get a secured card. You can look at um, any local credit union would be even better. They would probably have better interest rates. Um, and then you can start taking advantage of different cards that have um, perks and benefits, such as for us, we travel a lot. So I look for a credit card that has no foreign transaction fees. I look for one that can give me and build me miles for certain airline companies and loyalty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it depends on what you guys want to um, be able to use it for. If, you, if you're if you like a heavy Costco or Sam's Club user, maybe you get a card for them. But you, you try to stray away from credit cards for um, certain smaller companies or those who only offer one type of line of products like maybe um like a clothing or a retail store you you would want to try stay away um from a credit card from a retail store yeah yeah you know um i loved everything that you shared brandon especially you know and thank you for elaborating more about um different credit cards because i think it is important especially you know for me when i started looking at what i should get into and all these different, there's so many different um, resources out there when it comes to finances. So thank you for narrowing it down and being a little bit more specific about that. And, you know, um, thank you in general for being on the show again. Um, I always learn so much from you and we are so happy to discuss methods to help people eliminate their debt. And I think it's crazy how a strategy like these can eliminate your debt in nearly half the time while making little to no changes in your lifestyle. Um, so yes, thank you again for being on the show, Brandon. Thank you. Hope to see you all at the next episode of Money Talks. I'm Shana Park, a Gen Z, inspiring lives and liberties. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.